The lives of the prophets of God, as depicted in the Quran and other sacred texts, present a profound narrative of resilience, faith, and divine purpose. These chosen individuals were tasked with the monumental mission of guiding humanity towards righteousness in the worship of one true God. Their journeys were replete with immense challenges, primarily emanating from their own people, who often rejected, mocked, and persecuted them. This pattern of rejection underscores a timeless struggle between divine guidance and human obstinacy. The life of Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger, encapsulates the full spectrum of challenges faced by his predecessors. His early followers in Mecca endured severe persecution, social ostracism, and economic boycotts. The Quraysh leaders mocked his message, plotted against his life, and waged wars to obliterate his growing community. Despite these immense challenges, Muhammad's character shone through with patience, compassion, and unwavering faith in God. His eventual triumph in uniting the Arabian Peninsula under the banner of Islam is a testament to the transformative power of divine guidance and the resilience of a righteous mission. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Nothing is said to you, O Muhammad, except what was already said to the messengers before you. Indeed, your Lord is the possessor of forgiveness and also the possessor of painful punishment. Surah Yunus chapter 10 verses 41 to 43 convey a profound and timeless message that echoes across the records of history and reverberates through the lives of prophets. They illuminate the unbroken chain of divine revelation, underscoring that the message entrusted to Muhammad, peace be upon him, is but a continuation of the timeless truth imparted to preceding messengers. These verses serve as a poignant reminder of the unwavering resistance of unbelievers throughout ages reflecting a consistent skepticism towards divine guidance. Moreover, they unveil the two aspects of Allah's attributes, forgiveness and punishment, prompting deep introspection into human accountability and the repercussions of heedlessness. Through these verses, we are summoned to humility, beckoned to heed the eternal wisdom of divine guidance, and impelled towards seeking forgiveness while aligning our actions with the divine will. We move on to Surah Ash-Shu'ara, the Poets, chapter 26, verse 154, which encapsulates the recurring demand made by disbelievers to their respective prophets, questioning their authenticity and demanding extraordinary proofs. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. You are but a human being like us, so bring us a miracle, a sign, if you are of the truthful. This verse reflects the skepticism and arrogance often displayed by those who reject divine guidance, challenging the authority of the messenger based on their human nature. It underscores the need for tangible evidence to validate claims, revealing the persistent struggle between faith and skepticism throughout history. Furthermore, Surah Al-Anam, the cattle, chapter six, verse 37, articulates the recurring demand of disbelievers for tangible signs from their prophets questioning the authenticity of their message. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And they said, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? Say, indeed, Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. This verse echoes the persistent query throughout history. Why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The response provided, Indeed, Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know, underscores the capability of Allah to provide signs, but highlights the blindness of many to recognize them. This verse encapsulates the theme of faith versus skepticism, emphasizing the importance of spiritual insight and humility in recognizing divine guidance amidst the clamor of doubt. Additionally, it reaffirms that it is not at all difficult for Allah to send down a miracle, sign, further emphasizing his limitless power and authority. Expanding further, Surah Ash-Shu'ara the Poets, chapter 26, verse 4, presents a powerful assertion of divine authority, illustrating the potential for miraculous signs to affirm the truth of prophethood. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. If we will, we can send down from the sky a miracle, a sign to which they will bend down their necks in submission. 
This verse emphasizes the absolute sovereignty of Allah, stating, If we will, we can send down from the sky a miracle sign to which they will bend down their necks in submission. Allah indeed possesses the power to send down a miracle sign capable of compelling all unbelievers to yield and submit. However, belief under compulsion is not acceptable to Allah, for true faith must arise from sincere conviction and understanding. Allah calls upon humankind to employ their faculties of reason and observation, urging them to recognize the signs scattered throughout the universe and within their own selves. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And in the earth are signs for those of assured faith, and also in your own selves. Will you not then see? These verses serve as a poignant reminder of Allah's limitless power and His ability to manifest signs as a testament to His truth. It underscores the profound significance of recognizing and submitting to divine guidance while upholding the integrity of free will and genuine belief. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Say, O Muhammad, observe what is in the heavens and the earth, but neither signs nor warners profit those who do not believe. Continuing further, Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 101, delivers a poignant message urging reflection upon the signs scattered throughout the heavens and the earth. Through the instruction to say, O Muhammad, observe what is in the heavens and the earth. This verse invites contemplation of the intricate design and vastness of creation, which serve as manifestations of divine wisdom and power. Yet it asserts that neither signs nor warners can benefit those who refuse to believe. This verse underscores the importance of receptive hearts and minds, highlighting that faith cannot be compelled through mere observation of signs. Rather, it requires a willingness to acknowledge and submit to truth. However, even if Allah were to send down a miracle, as He did through His prophets, the unbelievers would still dismiss it as magic. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And never did a sign from among their Lord's signs come to them, but they turned away from it. And if they see a miracle, a sign from Allah, they mock at it and say, this is nothing but evident magic. This additional insight reveals the stubbornness and obstinacy of those who choose to reject the truth despite clear evidence, emphasizing the importance of humility and open-mindedness in the pursuit of faith. Additionally, Surah Al-Hajr, The Rocky Path. Chapter 15, verses 14 to 15, present a vivid illustration of the obstinacy and disbelief of the disbelievers. Even if Allah were to open a gate for them in the sky and they were to ascend through it, they would still find excuses to deny the truth. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And even if we had opened to them a gate through the sky and they continued ascending therein, they would say, our eyes have been dazzled. Rather, we are a people bewitched by sorcery. These verses reflect the deep-rooted skepticism and arrogance of those who reject divine guidance. Their refusal to acknowledge the miraculous signs of Allah is indicative of their spiritual blindness and obstinacy. Despite the overwhelming evidence of Allah's power and majesty, they attribute it to sorcery, further highlighting their rejection of truth and unwillingness to submit to divine authority. Allah provides us with an example of how deeply rooted disbelief is in those unbelievers, emphasizing the entrenched nature of their denial and the severity of their rejection of divine guidance. In Surah Al-Araf, The Heights, chapter 7, verse 132, Allah recounts the obstinate refusal of the disbelievers to accept the truth, regardless of the evidence presented to them. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And they said, whatever miracle you may bring to bewitch us with, we are not going to believe you. Their response, whatever miracle or a sign you may bring to bewitch us with, we are not going to believe you, reflects their arrogance and unwillingness to submit to divine guidance. And the unbelievers express their disbelief bluntly, revealing their hardened hearts and closed minds. 
Despite the potential for miraculous signs to serve as proofs of prophethood, the disbelievers remain entrenched in their disbelief. Even after describing other examples of possible miracles that also do not profit the unbelievers, Allah informs the believers that those unbelievers will not believe except when Allah wills. This verse underscores the inherent challenge of convincing those who have chosen to reject faith, emphasizing the importance of divine guidance and the necessity of humility in recognizing and accepting the truth. Moreover, in Surah Al-Araf, The Heights, Chapter 6, Verse 35, Allah addresses the Prophet Muhammad, reassuring him in the face of the stubborn disbelief of the unbelievers. In the name of Allah, God, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful. And if their evasion is difficult for you, O Muhammad, then if you are able to seek a tunnel into the earth or a stairway into the sky to bring them a miracle, the unbelievers will not profit. And if Allah had willed, he would have united them upon guidance. So never be, O Muhammad, of the ignorant. The verse presents a scenario where even if the prophet were to perform extraordinary feats, such as seeking a tunnel into the earth or a stairway into the sky to bring a miracle to the disbelievers, it would not benefit them. This verse highlights the futility of attempting to persuade those who have already hardened their hearts against faith. Despite the prophet's efforts, Allah emphasizes that guidance ultimately comes from him, stating, and if Allah had willed, he would have united them upon guidance. This reaffirms the concept of divine will and decree, emphasizing that true guidance is bestowed by Allah alone. Furthermore, the verse advises the prophet not to be among the ignorant, reminding him to remain steadfast in his mission and to rely on Allah's wisdom and guidance in conveying the message of Islam. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And even if there had been a Quran with which mountains were set in motion, or with which the earth was chopped, or with which it was spoken with the dead, rather, all matters belong entirely to Allah. And have not the believers despaired of the disbelievers becoming guided aright, and that if Allah wills, he would have guided aright all mankind. In Surah Arad, the Thunder. Chapter 13, verse 31, Allah presents a powerful rhetorical scenario to illustrate the futility of attempting to convince those who are deeply entrenched in disbelief. Even if there had been a Quran with the power to move mountains, split the earth, or speak to the dead, it would not have been enough to sway the disbelievers. This verse emphasizes that all matters ultimately belong to Allah, highlighting His absolute sovereignty and control over all aspects of existence. Despite the miraculous nature of the Quran and the efforts of the believers to convey its message, guidance ultimately rests with Allah. The verse serves as a reminder to the believers not to despair over the disbelief of others, as guidance is ultimately in the hands of Allah. It also underscores the importance of relying on Allah's will and wisdom, recognizing that He has the power to guide mankind aright if He so wills. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Truly, those against whom the word, wrath, of your Lord has been justified will not believe even if every sign comes to them until they see the final punishment. In Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verses 96 to 97, Allah elucidates the hardened stance of those upon whom His wrath has been decreed. Despite the abundance of signs and proofs, they persist in their disbelief, adamant until they witness the final punishment. Thus those unbelievers stay astray until they see the painful punishment in the hereafter. These verses underscore the profound stubbornness of those who choose to reject faith, regardless of the evidence presented to them. It highlights the reality that belief is not merely a matter of witnessing miracles, but stems from a receptive heart and sincere intention. Despite the efforts of the prophets and the signs provided, some hearts remain closed to guidance. This serves as a sobering reminder of the consequences of obstinate disbelief and the importance of humility and open-mindedness in the pursuit of truth. In the name of Allah, God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And had your Lord willed, those on earth would have believed, all of them entirely. Then you, O Muhammad, would you compel the people to become believers?
We conclude with Surah Yunus, chapter 10, verse 99, where Allah illustrates his supreme power and authority over the hearts of humanity. He asserts that if it had been his will, all inhabitants of the earth would have believed without exception. This verse highlights the omnipotence of Allah and his ability to guide whom he wills. Furthermore, it poses a rhetorical question to the Prophet Muhammad, asking whether he would compel people to become believers. This question emphasizes the principle of free will in Islam and underscores that true faith cannot be forced upon anyone. It reminds believers of the importance of conveying the message of Islam with wisdom, patience, and compassion, rather than coercion. Ultimately, guidance comes from Allah, and it is up to individuals to accept it willingly. In conclusion, those who do not perceive the grandeur of Allah through the intricate marvels of His creation remain blind to the awe-inspiring beauty that surrounds them. They fail to recognize the divine wisdom woven into every aspect of existence, and thus they cannot benefit from witnessing the suspension of natural laws through miracles. True enlightenment comes not from mere observation, but from the sincere embrace of faith, a choice made willingly and wholeheartedly. It is this voluntary belief that Allah seeks from mankind, a belief rooted in understanding, humility, and love. Hence, Allah has bestowed upon humanity the precious gifts of choice and free will, placing us on a sacred journey of trial and test. Our actions and intentions, our choices and deeds, all shape our destiny, and on the day of judgment, the culmination of our journey will be revealed. It is a day when every soul will stand before the Creator, and the results of our earthly trials will be unveiled in the boundless expanse of the hereafter. In this divine reckoning, the sincerity of our belief, the purity of our intentions, and the depth of our love for Allah will illuminate the path to eternal bliss.